ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thanks for coming. It's really a pleasure to be here today with you. It's really an honor and a pleasure to be back to the kingdom. I am Roberto Vares, and I have together here with me my colleague and friend, Chad Evans. And we are here today to introduce you the GFCC Competitiveness Decoder. And this is, in fact, it's a conversation, it's a presentation, and it is also an introduction of the decoder. This is the first time ever that the GFCC Competitiveness Decoder is introduced to a global audience like this. And it's really a pleasure to do it here in Riyadh. This is a project, in fact, that we started back, a conversation that we started back in 2010. And that was started under the framework of the GFCC, the Global Federation of Competitiveness Councils. I really don't know if you have heard about it, but the GFCC is a new international organization that was incorporated back in 2010, and which gathers 35 different, 35 members from 30 different countries. We have here today with us Deborah Wynne Smith, our CEO, who has really spearheading this agenda and leading the, all the connections that led to the decoder and this joint project. As I said, my name is Roberto. I work for the Brazilian Agency for Industrial Development. It's a Brazilian agency government that basically is in charge of fostering the implementation of Brazil's industrial development strategy. I have together with me my colleague, Chad Evans, and I would like to invite Chad to introduce himself and to introduce the council. Thanks, Roberto. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Chad Evans. I'm executive vice president at the Council on Competitiveness. Uh, the council is a Washington, D.C.-based nonprofit. We're 30 years old, and our members are corporate CEOs, university presidents, labor leaders, and the directors of our country's national laboratories. And as Roberto mentioned, the council, led by our CEO, Deborah Wynne Smith, has been a proud founder and supporter, along with Brazil, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, South Korea, Japan, Australia, and Russia, along with about 22 other countries in founding the Global Federation of Competitiveness Councils. And why are we here today? In the end of the day, we are all here because we care about our countries, we care about our people, and we are, we've been exploring ways of promoting growth and promoting development in our countries, in our regions. But growth and development are complex phenomena. But also, humanity has tackled far more complex problems than that. For instance, we have managed back in 2003 to de decode the human genome. So, as we managed to do that, we are also here because we want to move forward the conversation and the understanding on competitiveness. We are at the cusp of a new understanding on competitiveness, and the decoder was designed because of that. Actually, this is the time to write to, it's, it's time to write to decode the DNA of growth and development. And this is what the decoder aims at. And the project that together the council and ABDI under the GFCC sponsorship and under the GFCC leadership has, we have jointly developed. So we'll be introducing to you the decoder and before doing that, I just want to share a few words in terms of what is that? What is a competitiveness decoder? So it's a tool, it's web-based, it's focused on data, not on opinions. And the purpose of such a tool is to help us to, ma to master complexity, to master the complexity of growth and development. In the bottom line, if, we, if, we, if you are really able to do that, we will be able to improve national competitiveness in our own environments. And when I said that the decoder is a tool, what I mean is that it is supposed to be used. It's supposed that others will be taken advantage 
will be going there, will be going online and taking advantage of the five features that we already have implemented in the decoder. Using the GFCC competitiveness decoder, you will be able to visualize data in a smart way. You will be able to cluster countries according to their common or shared characteristics. You will be able to compare your own country against others, considering your strategy, what's being emphasized. We heard this morning, for instance, Saudi Arabia has more and more putting emphasis on developing the talent pool, developing its science and technology capabilities. A fourth thing that it's possible to do using the decoder is to dynamically see what countries are doing and more than that, how are they evolving across a series of metrics. And in the end, it will be possible to understand best practices. And here I have an invitation for all of you who are in the room. If you go online now to this URL, you will be able to go into the decoder to start to use the tool, to play with it, to learn, to share insights with us. This is just a snapshot. In a while, we'll be really going through uh, the live website. And this is a conversation that was started back in 2010. And just to move forward the conversation, Chad, if you could maybe share more information with us. Sure. Thanks, Roberto. Um, Roberto has teased up the decoder. And what you see on your screen now is actually the home page, a snapshot of the decoder. We're going to actually, at the end of the presentation, take you through the website live to actually show you in real time how you can use the tool. But as Roberto says, it's really a, a complex database. Um, and it's going to allow for some really interesting comparisons. And we'll get to that in a minute. But I think, as Roberto just teed up, I wanted to take one step back and to talk a little bit about the evolution of the decoder. Because the decoder did not just generate spontaneously. As Roberto mentioned, the 30 plus countries and the Global Federation of Competitiveness Councils, founded in 2010, articulated very early on an, an opportunity, a sense that there was a, a time now to think differently and to understand data and how it pertains to competitiveness in a new way, taking advantage of tools that were not available even five years ago, much less 10, 20, or 30 years ago when the US Council on Competitiveness was founded. And so beginning in 2011, um, actually at a meeting in Porto Alegre in Brazil, we articulated that opportunity, that data opportunity. And through a series of meetings in 2011, 2012 in Dublin and in Moscow and in Dubai, and of course also in 2013 um, in Russia and Moscow and in Seoul and Sao Paulo, we have been on a journey together to really build up a distinctive first of its kind database that underpins um, the web-based tool that we call the decoder. And I think what's important to, to note here is the, the contributions of the Global Federation of Competitiveness Council members. Um, because the effort to build the decoder and its underlying database is massive. Um, we undertook over the past year in particular, engaging more than three people full time for many months, tapping into existing databases within the 30 plus GFCC members, as well as exploring all fundamental databases, whether it's at the World Bank, the United Nations, the National Science Foundations, the Departments of Labor, the Ministries of Economy and Education across all of our member countries, and to really data mine what was really existing. But then what was a very important step and which took quite a bit of time and effort was to normalize and to ensure that that data is comparable across time for all of these different countries. And as you will begin to see as we sort of um, dive deeper into the decoder, we've actually been able to pull together not only 12 years of data across 164 discrete metrics, but we've been able to do that for 65 countries. So that really creates um, a fundamentally robust and in some sense, I don't like to use the word unique, but a very distinctive data set that has not existed before in the world. And that really, uh, I think, begins to set apart the decoder. But why did we build the decoder? What is it for? Well, the decoder helps us to answer really a very fundamental question. Which countries in the world are most competitive? But it does more than just that. 
the decoder helps us to begin to understand for what are countries actually competing today. Are countries competing for investment? Is that what defines competitiveness? Or are nations competing for market share? Is that the definition of competitiveness? I think we would argue that those are both important, but that's not all that we mean when we use the word in the term competitiveness. If you look at the arc of the conversation from competitiveness, from Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations up through Michael Porter's seminal work on the competitive advantage of nations and through the work that the 30 plus councils on competitiveness in our global federation have been undertaking and their own history and trajectory for the past two to three decades, we've come up with a very common definition that crosses all of those economies. We, as the Global Federation, define competitiveness as the long-term growth of living standards through the improvements in productivity. So competitiveness for the GFCC is pretty simple. Competitiveness is a rising tide that lifts all boats. Competitiveness is a race to the top. It is not a race to the bottom. And as we think about national competitiveness, certain things really matter. First of all, history matters. Your present and past and future economic states are critical. The second thing that matters are institutions, the environment for business. We heard a lot about that this morning in the opening plenary session about what helps to shape national competitiveness advantage. Strategy, we also heard about that this morning. Strategy really matters and the efforts that nations undertake to generate distinctive, differentiated capabilities. Taking all of those factors into consideration and through the past three years, the GFCC has worked together to hone eight fundamental dimensions that we argue underpin and define national competitiveness. General economic performance, economic complexity, infrastructure, talent, innovation, quality of life, and the eighth dimension that we think is important and which we believe we're adding new value to the competitiveness debate is that around future growth. What is driving long-term future competitive advantage and what metrics might describe that? Now, one of the themes that we heard early this morning is in today's world, as we're looking at and comparing more and more countries across more and more metrics over longer periods of time, we find ourselves in some sense drowning or inundated with data. In some sense, there's a feeling of almost information anxiety. And I think in the past that has thwarted um, new attempts to really understand competitiveness. But today, we now have the ability to innovate the way in which we think about competitiveness, the way in which we measure competitiveness, the way in which we actually understand what competitiveness means. We are able, with tools, statistical and analytical tools, as well as computing tools, to really think about bringing a big data focus to competitiveness. How do we think about competitiveness differently in a world in which we're able to actually, in some sense, as Roberto says, leverage great amount of data and really begin to decode that? So the decoder is our tool to help understand some of those fundamental questions. And I'll just go through a series of questions or some of the questions that we could try to, to answer using this tool, taking advantage of this tool. Once again, this is just a snapshot. In a while, we'll have the chance to go through the system through a live demonstration of the system. And the first question that all of us surely have is which are the most competitive countries? But competitiveness is something that, well, it's complex. There are different perspectives through which we can approach competitiveness. There are different strategies. So one thing that the decoder help us to do is to identify countries that share common characteristics and countries that are comparable. So comparison, making comparison, comparisons really fair in some way is another question, one other issue that we can address using this, this tool. A third question is, what drives, what, what is driving the way in which those countries are clustered? The previous slide was just a snapshot just to introduce you uh, to the visual that we'll be seeing in a while. And, but for instance, if we take one of the dimensions that Chad has just mentioned, that we call general performance, 
we have once again eight dimensions, 164 metrics covering 12 years for 65 countries. If we take what we call the general performance dimension, we see that the metrics that are really making the difference in terms of setting countries apart are related to the size of the economy and are also related to how countries are connected to the global market, how really they are connected to global trade flows. And another question is, so things are not static, they change over time. So another feature that we have here is about allowing people to dynamically understand how countries are performing over time. And, but let's imagine that each country has its own strategy, so we can set different comparisons among, against other countries. And at, finally, I think that all of us are concerned about the things that we can do, that we should do to improve competitiveness. And this is also something that we have a chance to use the decoder to better understand. So far, the Global Federation of Competitiveness Councils has issued three reports on best practices for competitiveness improvements. This is just the seed for the best practices feature that we are developing. We are starting here and we are moving forward. Well, summing up, what is the decoder? It's about data, not just concepts. It's a new concept, it's a new way of analyzing, thinking about competitiveness. And the underlying question is, competitiveness is not absolute. We need to think in relation to others. We need to think when you say that we are competitive, hey, who are we competing against? So having the capability to make comparisons is really, is really key. But in the end, this is all about learning. Learning what has happened and learning how to really improve performance. Having said that, so we'll share with you some information and the things that we've done so far, but there are lots of things that are coming next. We'll be expanding the data set. As I said, we cover 164 metrics, 65 countries, 12 years. We are expanding that with more countries, more data points. We are also expanding the tool with new features. For instance, a new one that's being prototyped, prototyped at this moment, which are the fast movers in each dimension for each one of the metrics. We are embedding into the system the algorithm, the statistical algorithm that we use to find the clusters that was done offline and was the results were imported to the system. We are embedding that in the system now. And probably the most catching thing here and one of the most challenging, one of the most challenges, we are building a library of best practices. We're kicking off the effort or the project to make that happen. Well, I invite all of you to go online and we will now have a chance, if we could switch to the website, we'll have a chance to go and to share with you part of the experience that we can get from the decoder. Roberto, can I just mention one thing is, uh, before you go into the website? Thinking about today's themes and the themes of this conference around partnership, as we're sharing and walking through the site a bit, I think one of the things we'd like to encourage people to think about as they view it, what could they add to the site? What, how could they partner with the Global Federation of Competitiveness Councils in terms of data provision, critique, and comment? So we are very much open to that, and I, I hope that folks will think about that as, as, as we're walking through the, the functionality of the tool. Thanks, Chad. So, in, in fact, this is really a conversation, and this is truly a partnership. When we first had a conversation about competitiveness metrics under the GFCC framework, that was on January the 10th, 2010, here in Riyadh. We are hosted at SAGIA's headquarters for a first presentation 
on metrics, different perspectives on metrics. And since then, we've been building social capital. And that capital, that partnership really helped us to develop this that I'm now going to show you. So the first thing that someone can do to the decoder is to visualize data. So if we go to the data feature, we'll have different ways of visualizing data. First, we can have just a table, yeah, a spreadsheet. But if you go to the top left there, you see that the eight dimensions are there indicated. We have this 164 metrics distributed unevenly among those eight dimensions. You can navigate, you can go from one dimension to the other. So another way of visualizing that would be just maybe to click in any one of them, let's say the data points there, and see how are countries performing in that year in relation to that metric in a really simple and visual way. But we can also go to a feature that will help us to have a different, not just having, uh, let's say, a, a, a tough view of the numbers, but trying to understand that visually. If we go and, and check uh, what we call the map feature, we will have uh, the chance to visually see how countries are performing in different, in different regions of the world. In this case, for GDP, in different shades of blue, we can see performance, how performance is different. You can do that for all the metrics, for any one of the metrics, for any one of the years, and so on. Well, this was the first feature. What else can we do with the decoder? Well, we can cluster countries, as I said. And if we go there to the cluster feature of the decoder, what do we have? 65 countries, and we have eight dimensions. And we, we run statistical algorithms to find clusters. So we are not clustering, we are taking that from data. Which countries share common characteristics? For instance, on infrastructure, we see these five different groups of countries. On the bottom, on the upper right, you find, let's say, the most advanced economies in the world, like the United States, the UK, Canada, etc. In the center, just in the center of the picture, you find a group that, are, that is comprised basically by emerging economies, like Brazil, where I come from, and Saudi Arabia. Yeah? And, but what are the metrics that are really defining those clusters? Yeah? If we have a look at that, we'll see that highlighted there, we'll find the metrics that are setting countries apart in terms of infrastructure. And basically, the infrastructures that are setting countries apart are the 21st century infrastructures. This is not to say that traditional infrastructures are not important. This is not to say, as it was discussed this morning, we all have to tackle at the same time 21st century issues and 20th century issues. But the things that are really making a difference in terms of grouping countries, setting them apart at this present moment are the 21st century infrastructures. Well, what else can I do? So I can, using this, I can understand we can think about and we can learn about different analysis, different comparisons that uh, one can, can make. For instance, hey, if I think I am Brazilian, I come from Brazil. Um, if I think, hey, to which countries should I look at when I think about deploying 21st century infrastructures? There are two ways of uh, have a, a look at that question. First, which are the others that share same characteristics? that my country has, what are they doing? A second characteristic is to ask, hey, what are the leading countries or the leading performance doing? And what the decoder does is basically to 
help us to identify countries that share the same characteristics, but also groups that we should have a look at that have different characteristics. What else can we do with this tool? Well, with this tool, we can maybe think about our own strategies. There are different strategies for growth and development. Each country has its own. We had a great debate this morning in the panel that Deborah joined together with the minister. And it was a great debate in terms of countries choose the strategies that they follow. Yeah. So one thing that we can do is we can organize information according to our own strategies and we can organize information in order to understand how the positions of countries change if we emphasize one thing or if we emphasize a different thing. Let's have a look. We can rank countries here just using the data that we have. This is generated, taking advantage of the statistics behind the decoder. But this is just, we did that, putting the same weights for all the dimensions. If we change that, we will have a different ranking. So if we wanted to put more emphasis on talent, on innovation, on the development of the talent pool, we will have a different ranking in the world. And this is something that helps anyone to think about potential or possible strategies. And what else can we do? So we, we talked a lot, Chad emphasized that we had lots of conversations this morning about dynamically understanding what's happening around the globe. And another feature that we have here in the decoders is what we call the dynamic view or the time view. And let's, um, let's take, let's say, infrastructure that we've just seen um, a ranking or some mm -hmm. of a cluster related to infrastructure. Um, let's compare over time how countries like Brazil, maybe others emerging countries for Latin America, Argentina, Chile, uh, maybe Australia. How are they performing in one of the 21st century infrastructures? So if we look at this, we can see that this, this is started, this is, those are not absolute numbers, those are indexes. So 2001 is 100. So the idea is to see over time which countries are really accelerating, which one are the fast movers, which one are lagging behind in relation to the others. Competitiveness is not absolute. You need to have a reference. So this time view feature is about enabling us to dynamically understand how countries are performing. And what we see here is that, well, in the beginning, Australia really grew much faster in terms of deploying inter broadband internet connection in relation to countries in Latin America. But later, countries like Chile and Brazil caught up. But what happens if we include, let's say, a different country here? For instance, Saudi Arabia. Yeah? What ha has happened in relation to others? Yeah? And what we will see is another dynamic view of this metric broadband penetration in the country, yeah? And basically, it will look like this. Saudi Arabia, since 2001, in this set of countries, is the fastest mover. The country that has made the most progress in terms of expanding broadband penetration. This is not to say that Saudi Arabia has more broadband penetration. This is about speed, this is about pace. We talked a lot, again, about this in the morning. Well, we can play with this, with different metrics, etc., and we are further improving this feature. Finally, one of the things that all of us have in mind is to the idea that we can work to improve competitiveness. So what can be done? We are kicking off really the initiative that will be a pioneer initiative in terms of building a library of practices. But we already have content. The GFCC has published three different reports on best practices. 
Those reports so far cover three of the eight dimensions that we consider in building the decoder. Innovation, general performance, and talent, which is the most recent report that was issued late 2014, when we had the fourth annual meeting of the Federation in Seoul. So what do we do next? as I said, is to further improve those features. And we will be drilling down and we will be building. And as Chad said, we are inviting all of you to join the conversation, but also to join the initiative. We'll be building a library of practices. And at the same time that we move forward and we go back to the, yeah. At the same time that we move forward, in developing the decoder, expanding the data set, implementing new features, we'll be really counting on all of you to work with us in that initiative. As Chad stressed, this is a partnership. Brazil and US have been taking someone a uh, role in really investing in developing this alpha version as the decoder is at the moment, and we invite and expect all of you to join with us in this initiative. Roberto, I would just add one other just closing point. Um, I think some of the questions we have received today is, for whom is this developed? Clearly, the Federation has an interest in developing it for its members. So policymakers within the different Federation countries can have a sense of everything that Roberto just described, evolution over time, what's important, what drives long-term productivity and prosperity for our country. But when we first previewed this 60 days ago in Seoul, we had tremendous response from a variety of other stakeholders. And so I, I plan to seed with that, just in your own minds, um, this is a tool that we've already been approached by several major international banks who foresee that this is a potential way for them to think about their own investment strategies. This is a tool for researchers. So not just for policymakers, but for those who really want to um, dive even more deeply and to co and collaborate and co-create with us um, the next generation of thought leadership around competitiveness. So we encourage as much conversation as possible around the decoder, and we look forward to working with folks to further develop as we approach the beta version this year, um, as we lead up to the next annual meeting of the Global Federation, which will take place in Moscow later this year. We're open for questions. Do you have a mic? Do we have a mic runner? An example of something you might be able to show in real time, and I, I don't know if we have this in the, the great data population, but you know, I, I just sat in the previous session on the role of women, and you know, there are a lot of statistical reports on that in terms of gender equality and this and that. Is there any way to take that under talent and show what would happen if a country strategically made a decision to focus and change that and how that would impact other parts of their economy, or is that something that's still work to do? Okay. Uh the one thing that we have for the moment, we have in one of the eight dimensions that we call future growth, yeah, we have included metrics on gender, environmental, energy issues. Those are issues that are becoming more and more relevant across the globe. So we have data on that in our data set. And we see two opportunities here, Deborah. First, for sure, is to improve the metrics that we are inputting into the decoder. Yeah. And the second is, as we grow, we expand the data set, over time, we will have the ability to learn from data, for instance, related to gender issues. But Deborah, this is an important question because the decoder is only as good as the data that we gather. So in some sense, what you're asking is critical because nations need to think differently about what they're measuring. So the decoder is also a call to action to governments and to leaders to think differently about data 
how they gather data, and the questions that they ask themselves as to what drives their future growth. And if you look traditionally at the type of data that has normally been used to define competitiveness or productivity, some of the issues that you just raised have in some sense been less studied and less examined. So that in some sense represents a limitation to the current status of the decoder. But it, as I mentioned before, it, is a, it, it becomes a clarion call for nations around the world to put more attention and more resources on what we think really will matter going forward and not to be sort of bound by legacy. Amit? Chad, this is an amazing tool and I, I would really see if we can use it for a smaller level of geography. Mm -hmm. uh, because if I have to make a location decision today, uh, if I'm able to look at say 28 states in India differently or the states in Mexico or Argentina, then suddenly this tool actually uh, becomes so big and so important that nobody in the world could actually ignore it possibly. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that is where I was about to say that if we can actually get the background tools to this, we could probably do it for India and probably do a beta or uh, at the same time. Well, I'll maybe take a first stab and then when we talked early in the presentation about the members of the Global Federation who contributed to this work, most of the folks who contributed data were national competitiveness councils at the national level. However, Roberto made a distinction in the way he described the members. We talked about 35 members across 30 countries. The difference there is that we have some members of the Global Federation of Competitiveness Councils who are at the regional level within certain countries. So we've already begun steps to engage regional and local actors who have the competitiveness mission at heart. And we do need to work with them to, in some sense, make the data set more robust to get exactly what you're describing. We've already had some uh, initial questions and queries from large consultancies, large global banks, who are asking exactly the question you're, you're posing. How would I examine Detroit? How would I examine Dubai? How would I examine DACA? So it's, this is, I think, maybe it's not the beta stage, but it will be part of the ongoing evolution of the decoder. I can't agree more with Chad in that. So it's a matter of how are we going to face the development of this tool, yeah? And I just wanted to say that we can have different metaphors for understanding um, the approach that we are taking towards competitiveness assessment. And the traditional understanding is mostly about prescriptive things. If you do that, you become really competitive. Yeah. What we're doing here is a bit different. We can learn from that from data. And I would say that here, the input is not just a question and you get an answer. It's basically a tool for learning. And I, I once again, I think that, and I, I'm really saying that very, Frankly, because I think that the conversation of the first panel in this morning was one of the best conversations that I, I've ever seen about the, the complexity of competitiveness. And this is a tool that we really try to enable or to empower people to tackle that complexity. Yeah. Um, so we'll be doing that first at the national level and then we see a lot of opportunities in the subnational level. Thanks for the presentation. I have two questions. How country uh, will deal with different ranking and different reports when they are talking about the same metrics that you are including in your report? That one thing. The other one is when we are talking about the hard data, uh, where is the role of the businesses or private uh, business on uh, this report? How their uh, voice being heard and uh, uh, transfer into an action that the country will take to improve the competitiveness? Thank you. You take first. Um, maybe I'll tackle the first question first. I think we were very determined 
as we gather the leadership voices of our global federation, all of whom participate in a wide range of activities around the world around competitiveness ranking, index work, there was a sense of an opportunity for something different, something that truly was based on internationally comparable hard data, as opposed to a, a, a predominant focus on survey research. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with survey research, but I think it is very clear that over time, dissatisfaction has arisen over efforts that are, that are solely and primarily based on surveys because of just simply the qualitative nature uh, of the surveys. Now, having said that, what we think the Global Federation also can bring to this debate in addition to the hard data are the leadership voices from the public and the private sectors that our own national competitiveness councils bring to bear in critiquing and, and contributing to this, to this data effort. I just want to add two things here. First, is I want to connect your question, especially your second question, and the things that in which we've been all involved with something that is taking place, it's happening at this very moment in Brazil. My organization, I work for something that's the Brazilian Agency for Industrial Development. It's a government agency that is in charge of supporting the deployment of Brazil's industrial development strategy. And because of the decoder, because of the decoder, we have just announced a new initiative. It will be a series of high-level dialogues in which we'll be gathering together senior Brazilian CEOs and Brazilian ministers. We will host eight workshops. Each one of those workshops will be focusing in one of the dimensions. So we'll be preparing data, preparing the background information, clustering, seeing which countries are sharing the same characteristics of Brazil, what are they doing? Which countries are in a different cluster that we should be looking at? This is something that we are doing in partnership. This is a true partnership. Deborah is a long friend of someone that is a senior Brazilian leader who is the founder of the Brazilian Competitiveness Movement, a private sector organization. He has approached us. We are working together. That organization is also a founding member of the GFCC. So how are we going to interact with the private sector? Did it because of the decoder, we now have the capacity to have dialogues and conversations that matter, that were not part of the agenda very recently, very recently. Yeah. And the second thing that is that um, we will need data. And I think that also the conversation in the morning is, hey, data or national data is not important just for the government. It's important for businesses. This was one of the issues. Your issue was raised this morning. So we see this part as part of a system. Thank you. Uh, two questions. Uh, one, to what extent the decoder looks into the future and uh, predict or forecast data and the depositioning of countries? And the second one is uh, from your reading and analysis of the data, uh, what are the three areas that Saudi Arabia government should consider to improve its competitiveness position? Can I go first? Yeah. We are, as we said, this is the alpha version for the decoder. And we are at this moment securing the funds and the resources, the human resources, to help us to further develop the platform. We have here our colleague Guilherme, who has just joined our team, he was hired by my organization, so one of the investments that are doing that. And one of the features that we are now developing is a kind of forecasting. It's not exactly forecasting, but it's a multivariate regression using data. And you could select your output metric and then identify the key enablers for that metric. And if you are capable of doing that, you would have some forecasting capabilities yeah so this was basically your uh, your first question and your second question was i forgot it sorry three percent well 
Unfortunately, I cannot say that because we haven't run an analysis on Saudi Arabia, but we invite you to do that. <laughs> if you go online, decoder.dgfcc.org, you will have the chance to play with data and to get into your own conclusions. Great. Um, I, I think just in one quick, I know I, we've actually run out of time, but I wanted to just do one last thank you, not only to Sagia for hosting us here today, but also the GFCC membership, who, without whose contributions, the decoder would not be possible, and particularly members of our board from the UAE, um, Russia, um, Egypt, uh, South Korea, Australia, and others. Uh, Ireland. Ireland. Um, we're, we're very grateful for that, and, and we look forward to working with all of you. Thank you so much.